I now present to you, Jeff. Jeffrey. For this, I'm Jeffrey. Okay, then I present to you Jeffrey Dahmer in his command performance. Out of the way, Dahmer. Dumbass. I wish I had a best friend. Jeff's a little off, you know? I think he's kind of hilarious. <laughs> hey, Jeff, do you want to come sit at our table? I think we should form a fan club. <laughs> With you as our fearless leader, we can really disrupt this school. Everybody ready? It has been difficult with your mother, so I moved into a motel. Take a deep breath. Are you okay? Hey, Dahmer, what's in the bag? You seem healthy to me. What about what's on a patient's mind? We need to talk about Jeff. What is this? You uh, wouldn't know about the kids because you're not at home anymore. You want to talk to somebody about it? I see things in you that I don't like about myself. I want you to have friends in ways that I never could. I thought you stopped. Dart always told me what to do, just like you, just like you. I like bones. It interests me what's inside. God, Dahmer, you are such a freak. He's not a sideshow attraction. You're just having fun, you know? Get out of your shell. You need to be more normal. I'm just like anybody else. You guys, congratulations on Thank the you. film. Uh, I was telling you backstage. I saw it this. I watched it this morning. I loved it. I, as a as a person. Did you watch it on a laptop? Uh, yes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's uh, cool. But uh, just wait till you see it in the theater. Yeah. It, it really is a like, I I, I think it's very cinematic looking film. I, I completely agree. It's it's photographically. I mean, it's beautiful. The production mm. design is wonderful. I'm, I I mean, let's start there then, because I'm wondering you know, what your budget was. You recreate this period of time beautifully, with the costumes, the hairstyles, but also the color tones of the photography as well. Well, the budget is, was an, well, have to tell me it was an indie, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but um, it was just great. I, I started by looking at uh, photos from the National Photo Archives on Flickr, and it started to remind me of what the 70s really looked like. And then I passed that on to the production design department. So then we could make sure that we were not creating like a disco era 70s, yeah. but like a real 70s. So. And also specifically in a high school as well, like high schools and... Um, Institutions have a very specific look from that time, you know? Very brown. Very, very brown, yeah. Brown, brown lockers. Orange. And perfect, by the way, for the story. Like, obviously this is, it, it all happened at that, at that time in the 70s, but like, it's kind of perfect. Like the, the color tones and the, the hue and everything. Yeah, it's, it's kind of perfect for the story. What, Ross, uh, what made you want to play Jeffrey Dahmer? It was a lot of things. It was um, the, just the story in general. Um, the perspective coming from someone who went to high school with him. It was Mark. I really wanted to work with Mark when I met him, because. And I really wanted to work with Ross. So it was meant to be. <laughs> but it was also the fact that I came from Disney Channel. And I knew that, you know, ex Disney star playing serial killer would be the headline. Um, and that, you that, was, that, that was a good thing to me. Yeah. yeah, like a lot of people were like, don't want to ex exploit like the Disney Channel thing. But I say use it if it's a good headline. Like, I like it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it made Spring Breakers a lot of money in 2013. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it definitely did. Uh, also a good movie, though. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, told, I told it was him. all those things that made me want to do this film. Also, one thing I really want to add is um, he had a beautiful adaptation of the book into a screenplay that was blacklisted, meaning it was, it was a script that wasn't put into production. And it was it was going around for a, for a few years until yeah, and then it hit this it hit this groundswell where then a lot of people wanted to be part of it. So I yeah. met with a lot of actors. So when I found or met with Ross, I'd already met with close to a young uh, about a hundred actors. Most of them couldn't look like Jeff, but a few were guys I could consider. But once I met Ross, 
I was like, I think this is this is our guy. That was before I read the script too. Yeah. And I told him, I said, it's a ballsy role. And, he was, and I was like, let's do it. <laughs> well, it, it is a ballsy role, but I think one of the things that you, you guys do that is so respectful, not to Jeffrey Dahmer, but to the story, is that you don't overplay him. You don't cast him as maniacal or sick. or I mean, he's a, he, you know, he, has some, he has problems, but he's not walking around menacing and psychotic or anything like that. He's a, mm. he's a kid with problems. Yeah, yeah. And well, that's, that's, I mean... Uh, well, it's a nonfiction book. So that it's written, the, bit, the book is written by a guy who actually went to high school with Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. And he looks back and he never felt like he was in danger, nor did, would he have ever suspected that he, his friend would have ended up becoming Jeffrey Dahm, Dahmer the monster. And so that had a lot to do with how we faced, like, w how we were going to treat the movie. These kids weren't pointing the finger going, oh, this guy might be dangerous. That wasn't part of it. And it also... The way the script was, was it w w the way he wrote the script, especially like from an actor's perspective, I felt bad for Jeffrey Dahmer by the end of the film. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, and I think that's, that's how a lot of people feel at the end of this film. They feel strangely conf conflicted. Well, because he's a, he's, he's a kid. Well, you don't have anything easy to blame in the film, which is what I also really like. When the movie starts where we pick up with him, he has some odd habits and um, fixations. But what he also has that is so bad for him is there is no structure in place to guide him in the right direction. You know, his family life is falling apart. He's exploited by his friends. He's, un he's misunderstood by his high school. And now, whereas that could happen to a lot of different kids and they would have a great life afterwards, there was something going on inside of him where nobody was helping. And that's, mm -hmm. where, that's where the film is so, so interesting. And it doesn't have to be about Jeffrey Dahmer almost. No, I wasn't going to exploit the story at all. I was, it was about, it's a cautionary tale about a kid who's misunderstood, uh, lonely, but at the same time he's privately very miswired wrong. He's, he's deeply depraved, but no one else understands that. And it's how uh, the friends, the family, the school teachers, the community, the neighbors all miss the signs and he slips through the cracks. And unfortunately, he's not the first and he's not the last young white male to eventually go on to do horrible things. But this is that moment in time when he's forming into a monster before our eyes and everyone's missing the signs. They don't often, see it. Oftentimes, people miss the signs, though, too, because they don't want to deal with the kid that has the problems. You know, right. parents and teachers want to be with the star, want to, want to deal with the kid who's already kind of living a great life at 17, 18 years old. They let kids slip through the cracks because it's a little easier. Right. Yeah. It, it's safer to look the other way, but I think that's why we felt like the story was relevant yeah. to today. How did you come across the uh, original, the, the book, Durf, Durf's book? Well, I had this idea that I thought it would be interesting to do a portrait of a serial killer as a young boy as a concept for a movie. And then I found the book, and it, it, like, I immediately identified with this being the real thing, not just some you know, fictional version. And so that was before the book was actually on bookshelves. So very early on that I immediately emailed the author, and I had been connected to him and just professionally begged that I would be the guy to make the movie and just pleaded with him and we <laughs> and like we 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 like worked it out and so that was 2012 when I started writing the screenplay and so we were we made it a year ago yeah it was a journey oh man i can't even tell you how much mark myers and his wife jody um Georgenti, our, our key producer worked so hard to get this film made like for 5 years yeah, I mean, we made another movie in between. Yeah, but <laughs> but, but still, that's, that's a high class problem. That was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in, I mean, yeah, that's that's it's insanely hard to make movies. I right. imagine, especially a movie like this, it's really hard to get them made. Russell, when you decided to play uh, Jeffrey Dahmer as a as a teenager, what kind of research did you do? Because you've told me that you stuck to this period of time and didn't really want to venture outside of that. Uh, but I think you did a little bit, you know, ventured outside a little bit more, right? Yeah, yeah. I definitely. Um, <laughs> I, I know like pretty much everything about Jeffrey Dahmer at this point. Um, <laughs> You're a Jeffrey Dahmer aficionado. Good for you. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have like a little like like badge on my sash. You know what I mean? Serial killer expert. Ladies. No. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I went I went pretty extensively into his life, and um, there's there's a lot of good interviews where he talks about his high school years, and he talks about like why he did it, what he did, and. And he goes pretty extensively into into all the all those things, and it was nice just to get a sense of his brain and and how he acted in front. Obviously, he's in these interviews, he's in front of a camera, and he's being 
is the well-spoken version of himself. Whereas in high school, you know, he was more isolated and more just kind of off in the woods. But the, the interviews were really good stuff because I got to see how he moved. I got to see just kind of how he held himself. Um, but yeah, they were, they were really good. What's so interesting about those interviews, uh, I've watched them myself, mm -hmm. uh, is that as much as he explains and talks about what he did, it still doesn't it still doesn't help. You're still left going like, but how could you do the things? Even if he says, I did them because of this, you're like, mm -hmm. that's not a good explanation. You know, there's there's real, there's no good explanation for the things that he did, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. And, and it goes back to what you said earlier, where he was just quite literally just depraved and yeah. just unhinged. And, and he had these weird fantasies that he he couldn't help but act on. How I, I haven't I haven't read the 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 source material, Mark. But how closely did you did you stick to the source material? I was as loyal as I could be, considering I was also turning into a movie. So it's all based on fact. The author, everything in the book is fact. Um, I developed further the home life because of those important for the story. Because uh, Durf, the author, he wasn't in that house, so we can only sort of suggest and um, talk about how the family was going through a divorce at that time. But I could you know, really ex examine what Jeff must have been like living at home with the, his, his parents' marriage dissolving around him. But also, you know, I went to high school too, and my friends and I, we did stupid stuff. Yeah. And so I felt that there was a lot of room in there to like kind of bring some of that kind of, the, those sort of jokes and the way we spoke into this. Well, what with 70 slang. <laughs> with, yeah. that, was, that was actually pretty important to us. We yeah. didn't want to use anything that was yeah. not you know, in that time. Anytime I was writing a draft, I had a 70s slang dictionary on my computer with me, so I could always glance at it and check out how they spoke. But that's so interesting, because uh, as I was watching the movie, I don't remember ever feeling like there was that much 70s slang in it, which is a good thing, because right. you don't want to be watched. As soon as you hear the word groovy, you're like, oh, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. sometimes they try too hard. Yeah. It's just once in a while. I think it was also just to be to make sure that we didn't go too, like to have any modern phrases in there. Yeah. That that was really like the caution. Yeah. Well, you don't really talk at all in it, so you don't have no, to worry about. No, it. no, that was that was mostly for the Dahmer fan club boys. Yeah, yeah. cause they, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that they were doing where they were really, just kind of improving. Yeah. A, a, like a few of the scenes, you know, because you you they, in such a way like they kind of like bleed into the scene, mm -hmm. and then go from there kind of thing. There's a few scenes in the film that do that. Yeah, so the that, term aggressively, like, oh, yeah. she's aggressively oh, hot. That was like a term. It still kind of, is for some of them. Yeah, they, they were using that on set, and they're like, can we say it in, yeah. in the scene? I was like, yeah, sure. Wait, is that like a they would, No. Oh, no, they just like saying it? They just They would say it for it. everything. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm aggressively hungry. Yeah. All the time. It didn't matter what it was. Like, And then when they get too cool for school, I would like pop my head yeah. in the scene and be like, dude, just remember, you guys are all still virgins, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it started. But then like a few days in, he's like, you're virgins. You're virgins. <laughs> and they like walk away. <laughs> and we're like, okay, yeah, good, good. You're, you're aggressively a, of... a virgin. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, about, what about you on set? I mean, having to play someone like your kid... Dahmer, your character, he's isolated, he's outside. As much as when he's in a group, he's still kind of detached and mm -hmm. outside of them. Did you try to, try to keep that up when the cameras weren't rolling, or were you sort of fine, you know, going back and forth? Yeah, it was, um, it was interesting. We were kind of trying to find it the whole film. A lot of people on set called me Jeff. A lot of the Dahmer boys called me Jeff. We actually referred to each other as our character names. Or, or it was usually just Dahmer. Um, Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I referred you know, to everyone by their character names on set. Yeah, like I didn't really talk to them as their professional name. Yeah, and which which honestly helps. It helps to just kind of be in that role, in that world, and in that reality at that time, especially for, you know for acting purposes, obviously. Well, I think especially for you as well. The other guys kind of get to play for you know normal teenagers, right? Yeah. Where you are actually doing something very specific with your body, with, mm -hmm. with your body language, how you're interacting with people, the tone of your voice. Mm -hmm. So you sort of have to. I mean, I would imagine that it. It wouldn't be as easy to do on camera if you couldn't if you if you weren't maintaining it off camera a little. Sure, bit. sure, yeah, no, and and we were. Alex and I didn't speak much. I, I mean, we did on the weekends and things like that. We still are like really good friends today, but we wanted to create this dynamic between each other where we're acquaintances, but we're not. You know what I mean? Because there is that barrier between them. There, there are some scenes where he freaked them out, and they would kind of 
walk yeah. away. One in spe- one particular close to the end of the movie where Alex Wolf, the actor, Yo, he would, was freaked out. He was, <laughs> he was freaked out, and he would come up to me and just be like, "What's up with Ross?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, he's Jeff, but just let him do his thing." And he was he was at the darkest of edges of his psyche at that point. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That, that, yeah. that was well. There were a few scenes where. I was really in it, yeah. um, which was obviously the goal. And I really, I, re- I honestly was like, I didn't really have a sense of Ross at all. It was, it was just like, I was just this, this guy, Jeff. You know what I mean? The camera wasn't even there in, in, in my head at some points. And that's the goal. That's where I want to get to, you know? Yeah, that's cool. That's, yeah. I mean, that's why you act, because yeah. you want to have these moments where you're transcending your idea of you and this character, mm-hmm. and you're in something without even realizing it. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about this, you know, in, in regards to Jeff, obviously, because of what happens to him later in his life, there's a different context that is applied to everything he does as a teenager. Was that something that you were kind of interested in exploring? Because when I was watching, I kept feeling like, oh, these are just things that kids do, but this feels so different because it's about this guy who becomes a monster. Totally. I mean, I, you know, I knew I was making a movie for 2017 and on, and we're going to watch it from that perspective so with the I, exception of dismembering animals sorry <laughs> right right yeah, we, yeah. we start with some roadkill and we yeah. go on we go on from there um so i knew that everyone watching it is going to be somewhat educated on who jeffrey dahmer became and that's in their mind as they're watching the film that way i didn't need to like give you all of that at the top of the movie or 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 even ex- like exploit that through the experience of watching the film. Because at the same time, we have all this heavy conversation about who he became. There are also a bunch of kids that are having a good time, at, and there's a lot of jokes in the film, too, because teenagers just are funny. Yeah. And Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer actually referred to high school as the best time of his life. Well, it definitely got worse from there, so. Yeah, that's yeah. true, but you mean, that, is like, that is not a fun high school time for that no. guy. No, no, but he just, he just refers to it as the happiest moment of his life, because he was... He had friends. Yeah, yeah, he had actually, you know, he had. He, he was, was connected in exactly, some way. Exactly, exactly, right. yeah. Yeah. Talk about. And then, the and then, you know, everyone, as you see in the film, abandons him. Yeah. Talk about the the casting of his father, because one of the, if you know anything about Jeffrey Dahmer, you know that his relationship with his father was extremely complicated, especially later in life. You know, when the events unfolded, his father would do interviews, and the two of them would kind of talk about how he was raised and who his father was. So, talk about casting him. In building that character based off of that knowledge. Well, I gotta be honest, like Dallas Roberts, who's an extraordinary actor, from very early on when we talked about building the cast, I just felt like he's gotta be the dad. And I, I, I reached out um, to his team and we had a beer here in New York and hit it off, we had a good good time. It was right before like a July 4th holiday. So it was like, see you soon, have a good vacation. And a year later, he showed up on set. And it just was something that from the very beginning, I just felt like he he's the right guy Why is that? good instinct thanks because <laughs> i i think uh, i don't know I, you know i saw him in one or two other things and always remembered his performance and i think he he's just one of those incredible actors that um is so generous to the actors around him and he's got a creepiness to him but he's also like a warm guy at the same time and i felt like that was a nice mix and then the likeness i think is very believable between him and ross is um you know, you, father like physically. Stuff. Yeah, just yeah. To, like you understand, like oh yeah, they could have that Definitely. sperm could have created that that guy right there. And and then one producer actually said during one of the screenings afterwards, he goes, "Do you realize those guys have the same nose?" So now every time I see <laughs> you guys in profile nose. together on screen, I'm like, "Yeah, they do have the same nose." <laughs> what was your guys' uh, biggest fear in making this movie? Um, I ask that question a lot, but I think spe- it can be very specifically applied to a movie like this and a story like this. Quite honestly, like not doing a good job. It's the first time I'd done a movie like this, first time playing a serial killer, and uh, just really wanted to do a good job. <laughs> I guess we'll rephrase the question. What did a bad job look like to you in your head? A bad job? Yeah. I, I mean, anything that's not, um, well, just, just quite honestly, bad acting. Gotcha. Like, like if, if it's not like grounded in, like, in that moment and just like realistic, you know? That, that I was just I just wanted to do a good job. You did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what, I mean, what about you as a filmmaker? I mean, I, I, I asked this question really because you're tackling something that a character that is, you know, very, very well known, a person that is historical. Wanted to just make every scene honest. And then when I 
honestly got into the edit room and tried to create a movie that starts, grips the audience, and doesn't let go until the end. And that was I don't even think it lets go at the end. No, right. It, it grips and it just holds on. Right. You're going to be sitting with this film on your head probably for a while. Yeah. Right, yeah. But in a good way. In a, gr in a good way. Yeah, it's, it's going to... Yeah. <laughs> I, I think anything that makes you thoughtful and it, it makes you want to, you know... The, the movies that I love the most are the ones that you're walking down the street a couple days later and you, you start just thinking about it again. There's like something in it about human nature that... You just, you know, you look at something in your life through those characters differently. And so I was hoping that this would be sort of, would accomplish that as well. Did you have a, a touchstone movie that you kind of used as a template for this that you were thinking about? Or did you sort of put all movies that you love out of your head and try to go make your movie? No, I put a lot of movies in my head, actually. And they all come from various places. Some are like foreign films that people had never heard of. And I Maybe. look... Well, like Kivzlovsky's, you know, um, blue, white, red, um, just the way that the director moved the camera. And, you know, I wanted to have a steady cam on this film and, and have a dolly and just sort of move the camera um, in very elegant ways where I could, given our resources. And so that was like one guy that I was looking at when I was storyboarding and sort of figuring out the shape of the film. And you could even see a nod to that in the opening shot of the film. It's taken right from the beginning of Blue. Um, where you're underneath the belly of the school bus, it's just like underneath the belly of a car in the top of his movie. Then you know, I looked at a lot of like teen movies like River's Edge, The Faculty. Um, River's Edge is the best of the best. It's a great movie, right. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's, but you're right. I mean, it was just one of those that I remember reading, uh, watching it many years ago and just like, oh, I want to watch that one again. You know, it oh, just yeah. sticks with you. It, I revisit that movie quite regularly. I, I love that film. If right. anybody's never seen River's Edge here, watch My Friend Dahmer and then watch River's Edge. Will do. Sir, watch River's yeah. Edge. Uh, let's get some I'm going to put it on my watch list. <laughs> uh, who has questions out here? Right here. You, sir. What's your question? <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so I was wondering, uh, Ross, since you said how you're using uh, your Disney Channel uh, background uh, to headline uh, the movie, uh, you also have uh, uh, your band R5, so I was wondering uh, how would you encourage uh, fans of the band and uh, your background to watch this movie, which is very chilling? Um, I personally think that it's, that, it's a, that it's a really interesting movie and it's a good movie. And um, obviously if you're super young and, you, and you, you know, you're still watching the Disney Channel, maybe it's not exactly pro appropriate for you at that age. But I definitely think it's worth revisiting when you get a little bit older, if if you are, you know, uh, younger. But um, or ask your parents. Or ask your parents to bring you to the movie theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I think it's um, you know, we don't show any violence in the film. It's all it's all suggestive, you know. So I love the idea of a parent after this movie having to go. Well, Jeffrey Dahmer in <laughs> 1996 dismembered. Yeah. <laughs> He was found with a head in his freezer. <laughs> but as Ross grows up, so does everyone yeah, that's no. been following him, and so we you know have what? now this form. The reaction, yeah. the reaction that I've seen from the yeah. people that do follow the band and that have seen me on Disney Channel and things like that has been really positive. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to the people that, that do follow the band, and, and, and they all seem to really want to see this film, and I encourage them to do so. Yeah. Uh, next question. Thanks for the question. Right here? Hi. Hi. Well, Mark, first of all, Hi. very cool shirt. Was looking at it the whole time. Very shocking. I told very him that cool. too. I think it's not the yeah, coolest I like shirt it ever. Too, yeah. That might be the <laughs> first time I've ever been told that. Thank well, you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> but Ross, my question is for you. Okay. You mentioned how <laughs> I had to give your nod and then move on. I did but... say that to him though when I saw him today. I was like, dude, I like that shirt. Yeah. Nice shirt. Screw off, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Also, very big fan. You're awesome. Thank but you. But Ross. <laughs> oh, you're, yeah, he's, yeah, no. He's one of a kind, this guy. We'll keep talking about how great you are, and then I'll ask why. Yeah. <laughs> but Ross. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how was it coming out of this character? You mentioned how you went to a very dark place to obviously express a very dark character. So how was it coming out of that? It was, um, it was a day-to-day -day thing, you know? Every day I would go in the shower and I'd, I, they put this hair mousse in my hair just like a, to make my hair like a mousy color. And so I'd watch the mousse like drain into the drain and that was my way of shedding Dahmer for the day. 
But Jody, Mark's wife, actually made a funny comment at our rap party where we were hanging out and we were, we were just, you know, celebrating the fact that we had finished this, this film where, you know, we were working long days and, and everyone was working really hard on this film. And, and props to, to the crew and everyone that, that was working so hard. But Jody came up to me and she was like, oh, I forgot you were like this. She was like, I, I forgot you were so, like, happy and, and chill and, and stuff like that because... I mean, I, maybe I didn't even notice it, but during the course of the filming, I was definitely more. Yeah. Well, what What would you say? He was kind. Of, he still had a Jeff in him during lunch time. <laughs> he even but, was like playing ping pong at lunch, like yeah. in your costume, and it was like yeah. Jeff playing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and everyone called me that. You know, it was yeah. it was like Dahmer. Right. Uh, that, that's what I I would answer to that. Right. But to answer your question, it took me like maybe a few weeks of being antisocial after the fact, to, to really like come back to like my normal self. But you know, even well, on set, we had good days and we had, we had dark days and we had bright days. You know, when the Dahmer fan club's in DC, it was, that was like happy times, smiling and, and joking around with the boys. And then there were other times where Alex and I wouldn't be talking on set and I was quite literally freaking him out because I was in that zone. Uh, I might. I don't know. You know what? When Tommy, when Tommy, he plays, um, he plays the guy who takes the pictures. When he first saw the film, <laughs> the reaction on his face afterwards, like looking at me, was hilarious. I can't even tell you. Like, like he was. He literally told me he saw me. And he was like, I, I, I can't really, I can't really look at you right now. <laughs> it was so funny. It was really funny. The um, author of the book was on set, and he asked. Ross take his glasses off while we were between takes. Yeah. <laughs> or like hanging out between setups because it freaked him out too much. He's like, that's too much like my old friend. Can and, you please not? Yeah. yeah. There were a few times too where I felt, because um, I really want to be respectful on set and in and, and professional in a work environment. And sometimes I felt like I was being a little standoffish to the crew. But uh, at the end and at the rap party and things like that, they were like, no, I like you were doing your thing. Like, you know, it was necessary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't be able to give the performance if every time, you know, they called you to say, you're like, hey, guys, how's it? All right, let's get going here, <laughs> yeah. you know? You would be able to do it. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, I was still, I wasn't like an asshole or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not a method actor. You weren't Daniel day lewis in it on stage. No, 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 no. But there was, you know, there was, only o- two there was people, overcast. Only two people you know what I mean? bought, beat you in ping pong. Only two people. After the entire. Yeah, there was, there was a little competition going on on set. While we were filming at the Dahmer fan, no, the Dahmer house, there was like a ping pong table, at, and at, not at, a at single lunch, crew member house. beat me. Somewhere else, yeah. I was oh. so stoked. That yeah. is right. We actually haven't talked about that yet, which is that you guys filmed at the actual house that yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer grew up in. Right. How did that? How did you make that happen, and what was that like? Well, I, um, the author took me around and showed me where he grew up, and so we went by the high school, and we eventually, at the end of one day, went by that house that he had arranged for me to visit because he knew through some friends the owner of the house. And then I reached out to the owner and let him know that someday soon, hopefully, we'll make the movie. And I would always call him up and be like, it's coming. We're going to come. It's not just going to be dropping by in Akron, Ohio, but it's going to be a bunch of trucks, too. And then he was cool with it. You know, he bought the house aware of its history, but it's also a beautiful home perched in the woods on a hill, and it's almost like a tree house, and it's a lovely piece of property, and that's why he bought it. And so he he just kind of allowed us to sort of take it over for about a month and convert it back to 1977. He was really cool about it, too. Yeah. He was yeah. really easy on set and kind of just let us, like, like take over the house. Yeah. It's also where Dahmer grew up. It's not where he lived in the 90s, so it's not right. like it right. has those ghosts. It, right. is, yeah. it, is it, where he, ghost. it is where he killed his first victim. Oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah, because he killed his first victim days after graduating high school. Yeah. Right. And he brought him back to that house where, you know, everyone had abandoned it. You know, his mom left and his brother left and his dad was gone. Everyone else was off to college. And... It was just one of the, it was like a perfect circumstance but for him to do what he did. I just felt like with everyone, we look at our childhood home, our apartment is something that has to do with who we became. Yeah. You know, it's just, there's something beyond um, sentimentality. There's just something about a childhood home that means something to every single person. So be, 
because that house still existed, I felt like the honest thing would be to make the movie where we would pass through that house. I also love that you can see the house in the comic and also in the movie. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Hi hey guys, I just wanted to say I'm really excited for the film, and you're a great actor, so I'm excited to see your performance. Thank you. Um, and I know we were talking about some of your inspirations earlier, Mark, and films that you watched along the way. Uh, I was wondering if you used any like old slasher films for inspiration, or just to capture like the zeitgeist of the '70s, because that was like a really big time for slashers from like '70s to '80s. Right. So. I didn't really look at many slasher films for this because it's not really a slasher movie, but. I did like glance through like Halloween, and I looked at them a little bit more from a technical standpoint to just sort of remind myself like how the camera moved is something I'm always le looking at. But there's no like slasher stuff going on in my friend Dahmer. Yeah. Genre of the film that was my other question. Um, it's a great. That's a great question. It is a horrifying coming of age story. I like it. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Guys, how can people see My Friend Dahmer? Comes out on Friday. Yeah, New York and L.A. this yeah. Friday. Yeah. And for an independent film, you vote and give success to a film by seeing it in the theater. You do. Yeah. You do. And that's, um, you know, nowadays, it's, it's, a, really a, little, it's a little harder to do that. Yeah. Not a lot of people are going to the theater. But in the 80s, when I was in high school, or in the 70s, guys and girls would pile into cars and go see a movie together. So I hope that happens again for this. And you know what? It's, it's looking really good. It's uh, like we have a lot of people that are really interested in just the story and, and, the, and the film and, every, and all the aspects involved. And I'm really excited to see what happens. I think it's going to be. I yeah. think it's going to be great. Yeah. November third. Yeah. November third. Yeah. November third. New yeah. York and L.A. You guys did an amazing it, it, job. Yeah, and then hopefully it'll it'll go into the states. Well, yeah, there's tons of uh, theaters already that have been booked. I think by by now, maybe even 50 or 60. And then just upon you know, the first couple of weeks, there'll be more. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's true crime fans, fans of the book, fans mm -hmm. of Ross, people that remember or are curious about the 70s. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of different ways to come. And a lot of different avenues, yeah, yeah. To, to come to this movie, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people are gonna see it. Guys, go see My Friend Dahmer this weekend. Give a round of applause for Mark and Ross. Thank you.